going to continue our discussion on um, extra synchronization by talking about various synchronization protocols. In my opinion, if you if you understand the, the principles of synchronization and how the drugs work and what you're aiming to do, then understanding the protocols is is quite straightforward uh, because they're simply um, just applying the principles that we've already learned about. New protocols come out all the time, but um, as long as you understand the principles, then any new protocol you should be able to read it and understand or have an idea of how that protocol actually works. The first protocol we're going to talk about are prostaglandin-based protocols. Then we'll go on to talk about progestin-based protocols um, or GnRH-based systems. So let's talk first of all about prostaglandin-based protocols. Prostaglandin F2-alpha, as you'll remember, is uh, released from the uterus and uh, causes luteolysis in the normal cycling cow. This has been um, synthesized as a hormone uh, commercially and it's um, widely used within the veterinary industry. Um, we either use prostaglandin F2-alpha, which is a drug called Dynaprost, or we use a synthetic analogue, and one of the common ones we use is called Cloprostanol. The aim here to try to synchronize estrus is to cause a decline in plasma concentrations of progesterone so that cows will enter uh, proestrus uh, or the follicular phase of the cycle um, simultaneously. One thing you do have to remember though that it doesn't work at all stages of the cycle. Particularly in cows, it's, most cows respond between day 7 and 18 of the cycle. If, if it's before day 7, often you, you won't get luteolysis occurring because there's not enough receptors on the corpus luteum. If you're talking about heifers, they'll often respond a little bit earlier than cows, so often from day 5 of the cycle they'll respond. This, this diagram just illustrates um, the different response rates at different parts of the cycle. Um, generally speaking, uh, prior to day 5, not many animals will respond to a single injection. Um, after day 5, and as you get further into diestrus, more animals will progressively respond. In my experience, the majority of animals will respond after um, day 5 in heifers or day 7 in cows, but they don't all, what I call, read the textbook. Um, some cows won't respond um, for, for whatever reason. Uh, but generally speaking, um, as you get further in the cycle, certainly when you get into the latter part of diestrus, most cows will respond. The advantage of the principal advantage of prostaglandin based programs is they just involve giving a single injection or in a case of other protocols maybe two injections. So it's quite simple to do. They're relatively cheap, two or three dollars an injection. Um, there's a variety of treatment protocols that you can use. Um, disadvantages are that as we just mentioned that not, not, not every animal will respond. Um, sometimes, particularly early in the cycle, they won't respond. If the animal is not cycling, if they're not ovulating, then by giving them an injection of prostaglandin, you won't make them ovulate. So it's not effective in animals that are not cycling. If the animal happens to be pregnant and you don't know it, then you can cause abortion. So, uh, it, so that can be an issue. So animals usually have to be pregnancy tested as not being pregnant before you start using prostaglandins. There are a few health and safety issues that you need to be careful of. Um, some people that uh, are prone to getting asthma uh, may be more, at greater risk of having some respiratory difficulties if they have contact with the drug either through their skin or accidentally um, splash it in your eyes or something like that. If you happen to be uh, a woman and you're pregnant, then there's the risk of uh, inducing abortion. So because of these warnings, uh, if you're ever using the drug and you're pregnant, then you, you need to um, take precautions and I'd suggest that you don't use it if you're pregnant. Um, if uh, other people are using it or you're using it yourself I'd suggest that you use gloves. If you do stuff, have stuff from respiratory difficulties then just be careful um, and make sure that you're wearing gloves um, or don't use the drug, have someone else use it. Um, if you do happen to get some on your skin then just simply wash it off with water um, uh, as soon as you can. Another disadvantage um, in cattle is that the precision in the onset of estrus following a single injection is not that tight. 
So if cows come in heat after injecting prostaglandins, they'll usually come in heat over a five or so day period of time. They won't all come in heat um, within a 24 hour period. So there's a bit of a wide pattern of onset of estrus. These are just some pictures of some of the products you can buy. There are different brands. These are just two of them. Um, Dynapros, which is a synthetic um, uh, copy of uh, prostaglandin F2-alpha, and then cloprostanol, which is an analog. The doses vary for different products. This is a 2 mil dose for cattle. This is a 5 mil dose for, for cattle. So you've got, just got to be careful what brand you're using as to what dose you administer. Doses in horses can be quite different and the drug can be toxic in some species, for example in dogs. Um, some dogs can die if you give them too high a dose. Now what is the reason for the variation in the interval um, following injection to the onset of estrus? We've talked about this briefly at other stages. It's predominantly related to a whether luteolysis occurs or not. If luteolysis doesn't occur then it's going to take it, you'll have to wait until natural luteolysis occurs before the animal will come in heat. So that can result in a prolonged onset of estrus. The other main reason is that it depends on what stage the, the follicle is at when you give, a, give the prostaglandin. If you've got a mature follicle present and you give prostaglandin then that animal can be in heat within one to two to three days. If you've got an immature follicle present then it may take several days, three, four, five, six days for that animal to come in heat until that immature follicle gets to mature. So immature, cows with immature follicles at the time of injection will take longer to come in heat than cows with mature follicles at the time of injection and this causes a variation in the pattern of onset of estrus following injection. Again this is just uh, illustrating the same issue. If you've got a mature follicle present and you give prostaglandin, uh, corpus, uh, if the corpus luteum lyses, progesterone declines, the animal may be in heat within a couple of days. If you've got a small growing follicle, it may take several days following luteolysis for that animal to come in heat, and so you have an extended interval to estrus. If you've got a cow with a medium sized follicle, then you've got an intermediate pattern of onset of estrus. So you can have cows come in heat at 36 hours, 48 hours, all the way up to five, six days later um, after an injection. Here's just an illustration of some of the protocols. There are other varieties of protocols out there. Um, this is a single shot technique um, where you may detect heat for five to seven days. What this does then, if, if for example you were to inject prostaglandin at here, at this point here, not every cow would come in heat because not every corpus luteum would be mature enough. But if you detect heat for five to seven days and then give your prostaglandin, then the cows that wouldn't have responded here, most of them hopefully will respond here and will come in heat over the next five to seven days. So over a 10 to 12 day kind of period, you could use this program where you're detecting heat here, injecting prostaglandin here, some cows will come in heat here and most of the cows will come in heat here that, didn't, that didn't, weren't detected in heat at this point in time. So, But the disadvantage of this protocol is it requires quite a bit of heat detection. But it does shorten the program compared to if you're just detecting heat every day then you're going to have to detect heat every day for at least three weeks to detect animals in heat. This restricts the amount of heat detection down to a period of 10 to 12 or 14 days at the most. So this is a one-shot protocol. There are other varieties of one-shot protocols um, which I haven't gone into but you can um, uh, read up about if you're interested or I can talk to you about them if you're interested. Um, the most Another common one is what's called a two-dose prostaglandin treatment. This is where you have two injections of prostaglandin separated by a period of 11 to 14 days. In my view, for cows, you're better with a 14-day interval. Heifers, you can get down to a 12-day interval. But historically, 10 or 11 days was used. But the response rates, I think, are less um, if you go to a shorter protocol. So I, I recommend a 14-day interval here for cows and 12 to 14 for heifers. Now what this does is, after the first injection of prostaglandin, some animals will come in heat in, over the next week or so and some won't respond because the corpus luteum is not ready, it's not mature enough. However, if you go forward 
14 days or so after the first injection the cows that did respond and developed a corpus luteum by 14 days that corpus luteum should be at least five seven days of age and so they'll also respond to the second injection so they responded to the first and they'll also respond to the second the cows that didn't respond to the first because their corpus luteum is too young by the time you get to the second injection 14 days or so later they'll either be coming in heat or they'll respond to the prostaglandin so most of the animals should come in heat after two injections of prostaglandin now if you want to um, do heat detection after the first injection of prostaglandin you can detect, detect heat in AI for this period of time and then the animals that have not been detected in heat at that time you can give the second prostaglandin injection to and they hopefully will come in heat over this period of time quite commonly however we omit this part that is the detection of estrus part here and just give two injections two weeks apart and then just detect heat for about five days um, after the second injection that just reduces the amount of labor here's an example of a um, a double injection of prostaglandin protocol to where heifers were injected with prostaglandin uh, at a, uh, two injections 12 days apart and then we heat detected for um, two three about four four five days after um, injecting the second dose of prostaglandin this is the percentage of he heifers that were in heat following the second injection so during this period of time you can see that not many come in heat um, at time zero this heifer was due to come in heat anyway so she was just there was a couple of maybe one or two heifers in heat at that point uh, at 24 hours you don't get, you might get one or two coming in heat but at 48 hours in heifers you'll get nearly 50 percent of heifers will be in heat at around 48 hours um, by 96 hours 72 96 hours you're getting a few more in heat so the bulk of the heifers are coming in heat two to three days after you inject after that second injection of prostaglandin so it's still a reasonably tight pattern of onset of heat but you still have to heat detect here to detect them this is from a study that was done in cows the previous study was done in heifers um, and this is two injections of prostaglandin again 12 days apart um, and you can see that most of the cows instead of at 48 hours you're getting a lower response at 48 hours but a more uh, more cows are coming in heat at 72 hours three days and at four days and this simply reflects the difference between heifers and cows uh, heifers the follicles are growing more quickly they mature at a smaller diameter so that's why you're getting more heifers in heat at 48 hours than you do cows but the same principle applies most cows are coming in heat within about five days of injecting that last dose of prostaglandin so with prostaglandin based protocols there are quite a few that you can use I've just illustrated a couple but there are other types of programs you can use they're relatively inexpensive another advantage is that if you give um, one or two injections of prostaglandin and cows aren't detected in a estrus particularly after the second injection then that may suggest that the cows are not cycling and so you may want to use a different protocol so you can use it as a diagnostic aid to try to work out who's not cycling okay here's a few review questions just to um, help you to think a little bit what precautions should you observe when using prostaglandin or its analogs to synchronize estrus in cattle what stage of the cycle was an injection of prostaglandin most likely to cause luteolysis in both cows and heifers and what percentage of cows in a randomly cycling group of cows would you expect to enter estrus after a single injection of prostaglandin so I suggest that you turn the, um, the tape off and, um, and just see if you can answer some of these questions okay I'll try and answer some of them um, what are the precautions you should observe well first of all if you're pregnant don't use them um, if you are going to use them wear gloves if you spill it on your eye in your eye or uh, on your skin then wash wash it off with water if you're an asthmatic or you think you might have some respiratory difficulties then just uh, exercise extra additional caution um, and just be careful um, if you are an asthmatic you may want to have access to your um, drugs that you may use to try to prevent the onset of respiratory difficulties 
if you administer if you are going to prescribe the drugs if a farmer is going to use them then I would always um, give them written instructions and outline the warnings just to make sure that they understand that there are some dangers associated with it uh, when will prostaglandin cause luteolysis in most cows and heifers in heifers from day 5 of the cycle and in cows from day 7 of course you do get some variability in that and not all will respond at day 5 and 7 but generally speaking you don't want to inject under that period because generally you'll get a you'll be disappointed in how many will respond what percentage of cows would respond to a single injection of prostaglandin if they were all randomly cycling now if they're all if you had an even scatter of cycles on each day um, if you've got a three week um, reproductive cycle this is in a hypothetical world um, and you'd expect that 30% of the cows would come in heat in the first seven days another 30% or so 33% in the second period of time from 7 to 14 days and then the, the last third between 14 and 21 days what that tells you is that if they're all randomly cycling approximately two-thirds of the cows will be day 7 or further in their cycle and should respond or they're coming in heat anyway so approximately off one single injection theoretically you'd expect two-thirds of the cows to come into heat in the next seven days or so and this doesn't always happen because cows aren't always randomly uh, evenly distributed in their cycle patterns and also there will be some cows that may not be cycling and won't respond and um, not every cow will read the book maybe you injected a day 8 cow and for whatever reason she doesn't respond and um, so that will also can reduce the uh, response rate also if you if the cows are responding but you're not detecting heat then that can also reduce what you think the response rate is how do two injections of prostaglandin um, synchronize estrus in cattle and what's the advantages of the protocol and what's its limitations let's just look at that question first well the first injection will cause luteolysis in cows that have a mature corpus luteum so if they're day seven of the cycle or more in cows or day five or more in heifers so they'll respond and they should come into heat and ovulate over the next five to seven days then if we give a second injection um, 14 days after the first then those cows that responded and ovulated with by 14 days their, their new corpus luteum should be at least seven days of age and they should respond to the second injection the cows that didn't respond to the first injection um, 14 days later they'll either be coming in heat um, or they'll then have a corpus luteum that's mature enough to respond and so they'll respond so most cows will respond after the second of two injections of prostaglandin separated by a period of 14 days the advantages it's quite simple to use it just involves they just involves injections it's relatively cheap the pattern of onset of estrus is occurs over about five to seven days if you want to do fixed time insemination that is if you want to inseminate them all on one day that protocol would not be appropriate because um, you'll get a low pregnancy rate because the um, heats are too 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 spread out. Um, it won't, cows that are not cycling won't respond. Cows that are pregnant may abort. Um, so there are some disadvantages and limitations associated with that treatment. Let's just look at the second question. What's the physiological reason for the variation in the interval to estrus following the administration of prostaglandin in cattle? First of all, some cows won't respond, and so you'll have to wait for natural luteolysis, so that will respond result in an extended onset time to onset of estrus. Um, cows that do respond, the, the, the maturity of the follicle that's destined to become the ovulatory follicle <coughs> does vary between animals <coughs> excuse me cows with a mature follicle at the time of onset of luteolysis will come in heat quite quickly cows with a more immature follicle will take longer to come in heat following um, the second inject from following an injection of prostaglandin <coughs> so these reasons explain why there's a natural variation in the pattern of onset of estrus after giving prostaglandin why might cut some cows that are injected with prostaglandin fail to come in heat within seven days well some may be too early in their cycle to respond 
Some may not be ovulating, so they're anestrous animals. They may respond, but you don't detect the estrus. Or they just simply didn't respond for a variety of reasons. So there can be a variety of reasons why animals may not respond. Occasionally, if the dose rate administered is not um, sufficient, then that can be another reason that cows don't respond. Okay, I might leave this question up to you and um, have a go at this one and see if you can explain how this protocol, uh, a one-shot PG protocol, reduces the number of days of heat detection from three, three weeks to 12 days. It's fairly self-explanatory, I think. So this concludes our brief discussion on prostaglandin-based protocols and we'll move on to other protocols with the next, um, next lecture.